Now, graphing a function when it's in vertex form, a uh, parabola when it's in vertex form, is pretty easy. However, if it's not in vertex form, for example, here, um, it becomes a bit more challenging, but certainly not undoable. Um, one of the easiest ways to get started is to check and see if it has x-intercepts. Um, so the way we would, of course, do that is we know that on the x-axis, all y values are equal to zero. So we can just set our output, f of x in this case, equal to zero. From there, um, we can either factor, or in this case, I'm just gonna use the quadratic formula um, to find my x-intercepts. All right, so now I have my x-intercepts. And then what we kind of want to do here is think about what a parabola looks like. So let's go ahead and um, first just kind of get a rough sketch of an axis here. And let's plot our x-intercepts. So now that we found our x-intercepts, we just need to find our vertex. And so I know there's either two, there, there's basically two options here. Our parabola is either going to look something like this and be facing down, or our parabola is going to look something like this and be facing up. Either way, though, I know that there has to be some line of symmetry that goes right down the middle here. Okay, because it's a squared function, and I showed this in more detail in a previous video, but we know that there's this symmetry. So the vertex, vertex has to be directly between our two x-intercepts. Well, if that's the case, how could I figure out how to get directly in between negative one and one third? Well, hopefully you guessed it. We're just gonna find the average. So h is just going to equal negative 1 plus 1 third divided by 2. Okay. Well, that's negative 2 thirds divided by 2, which is just negative 1 third. And then I pop, pop that on my graph here, and I can see, oh, yeah, that makes sense. So this line of symmetry here is just x equals negative 1 third. Well, if that's the case, then I know that my vertex has to be somewhere along this line. I know it's x value, and since it's a function, then I can easily find the y value just by plugging in the input so I can get the output that I want. So we're just going to go f of h, which is negative one-third, and I, of course, know how to plug that in, so I'll go ahead and do that. So now I have that my k value is going to be up at 1 and 1 third, and right there on the line of symmetry. So I've got my k value of negative, or I'm sorry, my vertex of negative 1 third 1 and 1 third. And one of the things I want to point out is that this then tells me that this is going to be a downward facing parabola, which makes a lot of sense. As x gets real big, only this first term will matter. And since this portion right here, the squared part is going to be positive, and I'm multiplying it by a negative, that would make sense that as x gets real big, I'm going to be traveling down. My outputs are going to become more and more negative. Now, from there, if we wanted a better graph, we can use this vertex as a kind of jumping off point and pick some x values that surround it. Um, you know, I might even just pick, you know, some easy ones to plug in, like negative 2 and um, 2 and maybe negative three and three, and we can kind of round out our graph and make it look a lot nicer. In the next video, we'll talk about what we have to do if, um, or, or how we can kind of formalize this, and if we want to memorize some theorems that allow us to find 
uh, the graph or the vertex even if we or there are no x-intercepts um, because obviously we could have a graph that looks like this in which case this method really isn't going to work so well.